Hey guys, in this tutorial I'm going to show you a quick way that you can composite your indigo renders over top of a photo background. So let's take a quick look at the scene in front of you here. We just have a uh, Heidi and a wall uh, right here and a floor on the ground. They have simple textures on them. And then we have this outside light right here, which is this big flat panel. If I uh, pan around, you can see it's just a big flat panel and it's facing this way. Now let's uh, go ahead and render this in indigo really quickly. But first I'm going to take a look at my indigo settings. Notice that nothing is currently set to emissive lighting. So there's not going to be any objects that are lighting this scene. If I go down a little bit further, you'll see that we have indigo sun and sky selected. So this is a uh, quick render preset for indigo sun and sky. But our angle is so low, it's not really going to be effective. It's going to be fairly, fairly dark. And our iClone lights uh, are not activated. So we have inactive iClone lights. We have a very low uh, azimuth for our, uh, for our indigo sun and sky. Let's take a look at our preset camera view here. I'm just going to go to preset camera and this is the angle that we're going to render right here. So I'm going to go ahead and render this in, uh, render this scene and that's going to load it up in indigo. And you'll see here we have some very, very, very dark lighting. If you, depends on how bright your monitor is, you might be able to see some very subtle, uh, lighting on front of Heidi here. And that's from the sun and sky which is coming from the direction of these windows. So what we're going to be doing in this tutorial is kind of compositing different photographs outside of the windows here. So I'm just going to go ahead and stop this and we'll go back to uh, iClone. And the first thing I'm going to do is we're going to go back to our preview camera. I'm going to select this thing right here and this is going to act as our sunlight. Now we can use the indigo sun and sky, but that doesn't give us as much freedom over the color. Um, say for example, we have a very bright environment outside, a very uh, bluish environment. We'll talk about that in just a moment, but I'm going to select this emissive light. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to composite this over a nice uh, sunset uh, type uh, scene. So let's select this emissive light. And what I want to do is go up to the very top and I want to select base emission. Now for the base emission value, I want to select something like uh, 30,000. So we'll just go up to here. That's a good uh, sun value right there. And for the base emission color, I'm going to select this color swatch here. And now I can choose from this uh, color wheel or this color selector here which color I want. So let's say, for example, we have a very nice sunset type uh, look, which is what we're going to load in in just a sec. I'd probably want to light somewhere around, you know, here, uh, like some orangish, um, bright orange, maybe something like that would do. So I'm going to press OK. And then I'm going to go back to my uh, preset camera view here. And I can render this right now, but I need to make sure that my ha I have my foreground alpha setting selected so that the background here, the gray background, is not going to show up. Now to do that, I'm going to go all the way to the bottom here. And we have an option called foreground alpha. This is a, again new with 6.03. If we select foreground alpha, that means everything that's in the foreground right now, everything that's in the scene pretty much is going to be rendered and the background is going to be transparent. So it's going to render as a 32 bit PNG image. Uh, so let's select that right now. We can just leave our tracing method at path tracing right now. And let's go ahead and render that and see what it looks like. So you'll notice now that we have that checkered background indicating that the uh, background is transparent. We have this nice light uh, shining in through the window here and everything like that. I'm not going to worry about any of the other render settings because this is just a basic tutorial on how to composite uh, this stuff over top of uh, images. So I'm going to go now into Photoshop. We have Photoshop open somewhere. There we go. I'm going to load in a couple of images. I'm going to go File, Open, and I'm going to load in this icy and this sunny um, backgrounds here. So you can see this is the background we're going to use for our image that we're rendering right now. So it's going to be, you know, very, very warm. If you want to get a better, um, you know, value, color value for what color to pick, um, for this one I would recommend, you know, pressing the eye hot here, you can use your eye, eyedropper tool up here. And then you can go to like, you know, one of these values up here, select one of the light values in the clouds here. And then you can take a look at your color swatch up here. And you can see that it's, you know, 253, 182, 28. So if you want to remember those values, you can put those values in the, uh, um, in the indigo uh, preset there in iClone. Um, I'm not going to worry about that right now. I'm just going to cancel this. And what I'm going to do is actually go back to iClone. We're going to start two renders at a time here. So I'm going to go, whoops, wrong window. Here we go, iClone. I'm going to start another render now. And this render, we're going to be using a little bit of a brighter color. So let's go ahead and select base emission color here. And let's select something like a nice um, teal, maybe a nice cold color anyways. This is going to be the Arctic uh, color. Uh, so let's go ahead and press OK. And we'll see the base emission value at the same value right there. And then I'll go ahead and render this one. And we'll take a look at how this one renders, how it looks different from our other indigo render. There you go. So this one, this one is loading in pretty fast. And you can see now that uh, obviously the color 
of the emissive light is a lot brighter on this one. And if we go back to our uh, other indigo render, the warm one right here, you see we have a nice warm uh, like sunlight um, glancing off of her chest and her face and everything like that. And then this one here is a lot, uh, a lot cooler. So I think this warm one right here, we might even be able to stop this and try and composite it in already. If I just uh, scroll my mouse key and you can see it's 200% right now, but uh, it's still looking okay. It's been rendering for a couple of minutes. So I think we should be okay. We can just stop this and let's save the image. And I'm going to load this one in. I'm just going to call it to S. You can see it saves as a PNG because I'm too lazy to type. It saves as a 32-bit uh, PNG. So I'm just going to save that to the desktop as S and then just go ahead and save that. And let's go over to Photoshop then. And there we go. And let's load in. Let's load that in right away. So I'm going to go File, Open. We're going to load in S. That's on the desktop here. So there we go. S PNG. We'll just load that in. And what I'm going to do is just press Control A to select everything in my screen here, and then press Control C to copy it. And then we're going to go back to our uh, sunny uh, image right here, and just Control V and paste that in. And you can see that pastes in over top of our uh, scene right there. And I can press the V hotkey and move this layer to wherever I want. Uh, I think something like that should be good. And then what I want to do is go over here to our layer, just right click it, and we can select uh, you know merge visible or merge down or whatever. And then I'm going to use my M hotkey, which is for the uh, marquee tool up here, and I'm just going to select you know something like uh, something like this, uh, maybe this part, and just Control C that, copy that, and they'll go to a file new, and we'll just open up a new image. Doesn't really matter, and then Control V. So now you can see we have this nice you know sunset off in the distance there, and it's kind of shining through our our windows right there. And yeah, we did that in just a couple of minutes. So let's go ahead and try that one more time with our uh, icy view here. So let's go back to our uh, indigo render, which should be okay by now. It's been rendering for a couple minutes. We'll just stop this one and save this one. And let's save this one as I. And let's go ahead and save that. And then let's go back to Photoshop. There we go. And let's go into our icy image right here. And then let's go load in that uh, other image there. So file open and let's find uh the I right here. There we go. All right, so then we can just take this one, Control A, Control C, and then we can just go paste that into our icy layer right here, and use the V hotkey and move it over a little bit, just like that. And let's hold down the Alt key and scroll in a little bit, and we can zoom in. And that's what our uh, scene is going to look like. So you can see it looks pretty nice. We get that nice blue light uh, coming in from the cold Arctic scene. And if I want, I can you know Control T and transform this layer, and hold the Shift key and transform it uni uniformly like that. Um, you know, we'll probably don't want it to be too large right there. Something like that would be okay. Press enter. And then on top of that, you can add like different uh, adjustments to each layer. So if I selected layer one, for example, and I went layer, you know, uh, and then go to like new adjustment layer, something like that. Um, and maybe say uh, hue saturation and uh, select use previous layer to create a clipping mask. Press OK. And then uh, here you can, uh, you know, adjust um, layer one, for example. If I want to adjust the master, I can just, you know, all those colors right there. You can see that um, the different colors, uh, if you know if we want it to be a little bit uh, lighter, for example, we could uh, do that. That's going to adjust the whole layer, though. Uh, what you can also do is just go here down to, uh, you know, blues. Since we have most of, the, most of the lighting is uh, fairly blue, we can go to blues and just increase the lightness of the blues individually like that. You can see those blues increasing very slightly and uh, decreasing very slightly in, in uh, lightness right there and, you know, increase the saturation or decrease the saturation stuff like that and then you can also you know make it uh green or, or red or whatever you want as well those blues are just changing color right there and you can do the same thing for the background as well if you choose the background and go to uh you know layer and a new adjustment layer and changes change the uh hue and saturation on this one press ok then you can choose the uh this this uh adjustment layer right here and you can uh, change the hue of you know, your background to whatever you want. Um, you know, you probably wouldn't want to do this. You can mess around with it on your own time, but, uh, you know, I'm just going to increase the, maybe decrease the brightness a little bit just so we get something like that. And then again, you can just, uh, you know, use your M hot key and, uh, you may want to make sure that you, uh, right click on your layers and just merge visible, merge the visible man. And then just, uh, select everything, control C, file new, Okay, control V. 
and there's our composited layer right there. So we have Untitled 1 right here. This is our, uh, you know, sunset uh, sunset scene right here composited over top of a sunset. And this is our uh, winter layer right here composited over top of a, uh, you know, winter tundra. I don't know why you'd have your window open and stuff like this, but, uh, and or be, or be dressed like this, but we're just compositing. I'm just showing you examples here. So again, guys, thanks for watching. Hopefully you learned a little bit about, uh, you know, how to composite in Indigo. And I'll see you next time.